Southwest Florida, welcome back to Leap His Life. We're here at Regions Bank, that beautiful scene you see in the back there. That's called Tamiami Trail, but uh, of course that's 41. And Regions Bank has uh, given us some outstanding accommodations. We appreciate you, Regions Bank. Be sure to check with them for all your banking needs. Ha, ah, a little plug right there. I have a fabulous joy in store for you today. We're gonna get a chance to talk to, uh, we're gonna talk uh, COVID-19, get an update on COVID-19. We got some people here who are giving their expertise and experience in the field. The Reverend Dr. William Glover, the senior pastor of Mount Hermon Ministries. We also have Deborah Ethier, the health education program manager for Florida Health in Lee County. And uh, we'll get right to it. We'll be right back. Welcome back Southwest Florida. We're so thrilled to be here at uh, Regions Bank. You're looking at Tamiami Trail. Again, shout out to Regions Bank for the great accommodation. COVID-19 has not disappeared, people. It's still in the air, and we'll bring you up to speed right here as we get a chance to talk to Deborah Ethier, who's with the uh, Department of Health here in Lee County, and uh, also with the right Reverend Dr. William Glover. Let me bump both of you in. Deborah, how would you like the, your department to be your to be identified? Give me that name. Florida Department of Health in Lee County. And don't get it confused. Correct. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! All right. Now, uh, you two have, you're not strangers to each other in the whole health movement in general, right? No. No. You know, tell, uh, just in a lighter note, just how you guys have worked together over the years. Well, uh, Pastor Glover and I go back early 2000s when we worked on a breast and cervical cancer program, Healthy Body, Healthy Soul. We also worked together during a health literacy program called Ask Me Three, Ask Me Me, and most recently with the COVID-19 vaccination efforts here in Lee County. Mm -hmm. now, what has been your experience working with the uh, Lee County Health Department? Over the years, almost uh, all of our public health advocacy um, major initiatives have been through the Lee County Health Department. Mm -hmm. So um, they are familiar with our work in the community and they've always proven to be very responsive and uh, um, viable uh, public health advocate mm -hmm. partners. When people think of the Lee County Health Department, Deborah, what do you want to come to their mind? That we're here to serve the community, make sure we're keeping our residents healthy, um, keeping them alive, doing what we can, doing our part to serve our community. All right, keep up the good work. I've always uh, had a great deal of admiration for the work you guys do. You guys are really grassroots and you, we don't know behind the scenes that you guys are constantly tracking data and looking at things and you're seeing trends as they occur. Yes, well right now we're tracking COVID-19 vaccination rates. Um, currently here in Lee County, we have about a pro more than 408,000 people that have va been vaccinated with at least one dose of um, the vaccinations and more than 348,000 or about 45% of the population that's been vaccinated, but we need, there's more work to be done. We need more folks vaccinated here in the county. That's interesting because I hear that word herd immunity. I have no idea what it really means, but I think it's a certain percentage you kind of want to get to with nationwide or in the world to, get, to achieve that. Correct. 85% um, is the number Woo. that we, and we're far from that. We still have a ways to go here just locally in the county. So that right there, Pastor Glover, lets us know that it's not over. Let's continue to work. You have just done a yeoman's job. When I say you, Mount Hermon Ministries, and all the partners that you brought together, uh, particularly in the African-American minority community, other pastors have come together, kind of capsulize what has been accomplished. Uh, you did the testing at one time, now you're in the vac you, do it, you did the vaccination, and you were really able to capture a group of people who normally wouldn't have uh, gotten vaccinated. Yes, well, due to our long history of public health, public health advocacy, we were approached uh, by the county management services to be a model faith-based test site for communities of color early in the vaccination process when state data began to show that black and brown people were lagging significantly behind in getting vaccinations. As we all know at that time, there was a rollout problem, there was an access problem, um, and the people of color just, and, and, and an hesitancy problem, and people of color just were not being vaccinated. So we became a um, faith-based test center 
And over the course of five months or so, um, we were able to receive a vaccine through the state of Florida, through uh, the Lee County Health Department, working with Deborah and her crew, and also through family health centers. And um, did a combined 12 clinics, uh, accounting for more than 3,200 doses mm. of vaccine going into black and brown arms. And you mentioned the collaboration and partnership with uh, community clergy and churches. More than 22 pastors participated using their membership roles as a base to get people registered and then extending out to family and community. Mm -hmm. When you hear that, that type of effort that took place, uh, Lee County Health Department, that was very, th that type of effort very important to the movement, right? Correct. And we're still out there in the community and we'll continue. We have an outreach nurse that will be going out to these communities, the minority communities. Um, their target is to provide not only the COVID-19 vaccine, but there are other vaccines available. And we want to make sure we get them to our low income, underinsured or un low in un underinsured and um, uninsured residents as well. Let's expound on that. You Vaccines are still available because uh, it's some that's on my end, but I want to present tense it because you hear me say was, did, past tense stuff, and I come back to you on that, Pastor Glover, as well. Current tense, we're not seeing these big, long military type logistic lines like I went through now, right. but there are other places people can go to get their vaccination. Yes, so there are lots of places where people can go to get vaccinated. You can come to the health department. There are appointments that would um, need to be made. You can call the health department at 239-461-6100, make an appointment, you'll get your vaccine. Um, the CVS, Walgreens, Walmart, Publix, all of them have the vaccine available. A lot of them have the vaccine available. A lot of those are walk-in, so you can just walk right in and ask for the vaccine. Um, you have your local small pharmacies, you have uh, primary care physicians, specialty offices. There are plenty of places where you can get the vaccine in the county. I'm glad you mentioned that because I had a personal experience and I want to personalize this. My son is 12. After much discussion with the missus, she, she approved it. I was the one in the house like, hey, let's get this boy vaccinated. Oh, you're reading all this stuff. So anyway, she approved it, took him to get vaccinated, went to Walgreens, not trying to plug anything, mm -hmm. but Walgreens will we'll take the advertisement dollars. Uh, <laughs> and it was quick and easy. Boom, boom, boom. He wanted to get the vaccinated because I know school is going to be going back in. And I, I could kind of suspect that that's going to be a big thing on the agenda. So I, I went and had that done. Pastor Glover, in the real world that you deal in now, you're no longer doing a big logistic thing. Boy, that was outstanding to look at, though. You guys were coordinating. <laughs> oh, amazing. What, 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 how is the church, how, how do you, what are you hearing out there on the streets? Are people going into these different outlets now getting their vaccinations? Well, I think the trend nationally is that the majority of the people who were willingly going to be vaccinated needed no convincing or little mm -hmm. convincing have already been vaccinated. We're dealing with a population now that have uh, vaccine hesitancy. Some of that is religious based. The, the religious belief system is, is a blockage. Some of it is politically based. The political belief system is a, is a blockage. And then for a small percentage of people, because of the conflicting information out there, there is a fear factor. Uh, so what we began to see uh, as, the, as they began to open it up to more ages is uh, more hesitancy, more reluctancy. And after about uh, 12 clinics, we found it difficult to continue to host because we just didn't have enough people wanting to get the vaccine. Mm -hmm. um, so as I'm sure uh, the health department, as they are addressing it, the messaging still needs to be there uh, that this vaccine is needed to protect yourself, your loved ones, your community at large, your children, mm -hmm. uh, that the virus isn't gone anywhere. You know, granted, we have uh, better therapeutics, a better treatment, we understand it better, mm -hmm. but there is still that unknown. You might be the one person who has a reaction to it that could be fatal. So we want to continue to encourage people to get it. And as Deborah said, there isn't a, 
a, a, a, an availability problem anymore or an accessibility problem anymore. It's really fighting through that hesitancy issue. And, and when I took my son, I just want people to know, when I took my son who's 12, all I had to do is fill out a consent paper. I didn't have to do a birth certificate or anything, and, and it just rolled right through. Uh, the Right now, 12 and up, right? 12 and up, and Pfizer is the only vaccine that's currently approved for children 12 and older. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if I can ask you this, I'm so scared, but. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that it may go lower as time goes on in terms of age? I think so. Yeah, just, that's not official, she just thinks right. so, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, the uh, <laughs> The, uh, we, we talked about um, how do we know that the vaccine is safe? Let's go with that. So the vaccine was made with processes that have been developed and tested over many, many years. And the clinical trials included tens of thousands of people. Um, they included representation from minority groups that also represent the population of the United States. The CDC has been monitoring the vaccine rollout for any health concerns. Um, I think to date, about 70% of people in the United States have gotten at least one dose of the vaccine, and the side effects that are being reported are minimal. Right. When you're talking about millions of people, this little, these things that we're mentioning, there's a very small amount. And that's with any medicine, you might have some side effects here Absolutely and there. Right. But it seems that COVID-19 get the highest level of scrutiny and everybody needs to know every detail. That's why I tried to get myself to that point where like, I don't know everything about every medicine I take in the past, but, uh, and there's always some side effects that may occur. Right. The, um, it's still free. Um, nobody's charging, even though it's in Walgreens, um, they making money, but they're not charging right. you. Uh, that The fact that it's free, Pastor Glover, do you think that encourages anybody or is it just, it's just, it's all about how they, how they, how they see it? Well, it, it was a global health pandemic. And if you monetize access to that, you don't do anything to limit and hinder the spread of this airborne virus. Uh, so it really had to be free if if the globe was going to recover from it. Mm -hmm. um, and also monetizing it would have uh, put an obstacle in place for people who are uninsured or underinsured. So it is a very good thing that it is free and 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 that should not compromise the confidence uh, the competence in the vaccine. Mm -hmm. I've always looked at this from the perspective of, Pandemics are not new to mankind. We've treated the COVID-19 pandemic like it's new. Mm -hmm. I, I watch a lot of time period movies. I just love those time period movies. And my observation, whenever I'm watching those movies and uh, those time frames where different parts of Europe or other parts of the globe experience pandemics, the one thing they knew to do when, when they didn't understand the science was the best way to protect yourself was to wear a face mask, and to isolate social distance. That's centuries old wisdom. Okay. Why it became so politicized with <laughs> this vaccine is beyond me. Mm -hmm. So I think sometimes we have to put the things in historical perspective to help us make better decisions and not be prejudiced you know, by unhealthy religious belief systems or toxic political belief systems. Mm -hmm. Now, I, you know, I'm proud to say that I got both of my uh, vaccines. Excellent. We are sitting here with no mask on. We're enjoying the pleasures of being able to kind of live a little bit more normal. Is it okay to say that all of us have our, yes, have had yes, our absolutely. vaccination, absolutely. right? Absolutely. We proud of it, right? That's right. Okay. All right. The, um, back to you. The, when you say when we 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 we're using this word minority there's a, it was like a it's like it's a instead of talking broad picture we constantly mention minority because there are certain things that we've noticed a trend in the minority community as it relates to getting that vaccine or do we see those same some specific trends as it relates to minorities as opposed to the majorities on how they approach getting their vaccination you guys are doing some stuff specifically to reach the minority community, right? Like how right. you... So we have, um, did I mention that already, the nurse that's going out? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Repeat the question. Uh, I Sorry. guess the question is, 
uh, does it, is it an extra effort? Does it require a lot more work to get minorities to get vaccinated, or should they go to the pastor? Go ahead, okay, Pastor. Let the pastor. <laughs> well, I think as with other health disparities with minority communities, particularly African American and Hispanic, it holds true with COVID vaccine as well. Initially, it was about access and getting over the hesitancy. Now that the access and availability of it is not an issue, then it comes back down to same types of attitudes and behaviors that put people of color more at risk, like with very common chronic diseases like diabetes, high blood pressure, etc. So it really just gets back to behavior and you know uh, cultural patterns of behavior that communities themselves have to continue to address. I see. Because again, uh, the initial logistical issues have been solved and there is no barrier except an individual's group pattern of behavior that's preventing them from being uh, vaccinated at a higher rate. The, Deborah, mm -hmm. the, um, the idea that it's over, you know, because we're kind of looking at society now. We can't, it's not as lead story on the news so much anymore. You're here to say from the Department of Health that it's not over. That it's not over. Um, like I mentioned earlier, we only have 45% of the population here in Lee County vaccinated. We need to grow those numbers. We need more of our residents to get vaccinated. So eventually all of us could be sitting around without masks. You know, right now, I don't know if the person standing next to me, if I'm in Walmart again, I don't know if the person standing next to me has been vaccinated. So there's gonna be that hesitancy still there because we don't know. And you have opened your doors of your church back up. Is it like, how are you doing that now? Is it like normal, everybody sit next to each other? Yeah, well, we were, completely closed for right. 15 months. And actually we just recently recently had our first public service where we welcomed people back. And we have the same safety protocols in place or similar ones to as when the, the, the pandemic was at its height. Um, we are requiring masking for everyone because as Deborah really? said- Really, that's very, that's outstanding. Well, as Deborah said, only 45% of the general population in Lee County is vaccinated. Okay. That number drops when you account for minorities. Now, I have a high degree of certainty that the majority of my folk are vaccinated uh, because we hosted so many clinics, but I'm learning a great many of them still have chose not to be vaccinated. So the only way to give peace of mind to all of our worshipers is for everyone to uh, wear masks. Um, and then our seating, yeah, families can sit together, spouses can sit together, but if you're not part of a family or spouse, then we space um, because people in the same households, almost in any setting, because uh, they share the same space, they can sit together. Um, and then, of course, we, we still sanitize uh, before people get there when people leave, and then we control the flow of, uh, of uh, departure uh, when, when, when the service is over. I just want to comment on that 45%. I mean, all of us grew up um, in uh, the school system and on any grading scale, 45% is a dismal failure. Mm -hmm. I don't know how anyone can have a sense of safety or that we've come out of this with a 45% vaccination Had rate. Had thought about that, Mr. Wisdom, but that, that's a good way that, to think about that it. That is, <laughs> that's alarming. Mm -hmm. And I think the pace at which we are resuming life as normal, and I know we're sick of it, I'm sick of it, uh, is given a false sense of a false sense of security, and we didn't talk about the Delta variant, but this new strain out there, what they're learning about it, it is not unrealistic to have a concern that by fall we may be looking at another peak in um, people getting sick from this virus, uh, because mm -hmm. so many of the people in this county are not vaccinated. I, I find that very alarming. If everybody would just participate, be a part of the solution, we could have a lot more comfort than we think we have. 
Absolutely. If we get those numbers up, if we get more folks, again, the vaccine is available at the health department, your local retailers, your doctor's office. There's so many options now. Mm -hmm. And another thing is, you know, we're also going out into the communities. At some point, we'll be there. So hopefully that will increase the vaccination rates, but we definitely need to get more folks vaccinated. Yeah, and I know when I went into Walgreens, I didn't even have an appointment. They just took care of me right there, just like the pharmacist came to the window, just have a seat right here, boom, 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 then sat for 10 minutes, my son did, make sure he was cool, mm -hmm. and then we just left. And then he'll go back in two more weeks to get that. Uh, broad picture this, uh, before we wrap this up, uh, going back to school. At this point that we're talking, there's no, is there any kind of what going back to school is going to look like now? Has that been come down from God Almighty in terms of the health department? Well, the right now the health department is gearing up for back to school rush and we will be offering the COVID-19 vaccine along with the other vaccines that children need to get into the Lee County School District. So. We are hoping that the numbers increase for at least 12 year old and older. Again, call the health department, make an appointment. There are gonna be appointments available on Saturdays, which is not the norm for the health department. We usually work oh, just really? Monday through Friday. Okay. So there will be some Saturday availability for about four to six weeks between July and August. So let's get your kids in, get them vaccinated too, like you did with your son. Right, because those kids could spread it as well, right? Well, yeah, I think th over the course of this, kids have uh, shown amazing uh, resiliency in terms of not getting as ill as adults, but certainly kids can get it and they can spread it, and uh, that's what the concern is. So I would like to encourage uh, parents, if they've not been vaccinated, can I talk to the camera? Go ahead, man. I would like to encourage parents that if you have not been vaccinated, get vaccinated, and also vaccinate your children. This is a measure of protection that will preserve your health and the health of your children. No one knows how they individually will respond to this virus. Some people have it easy, some people have it sick, and some people have lingering effects from it. Why take that risk when literally we have a one or two shot solution to that? Couldn't have said it better myself. Well. It's been a pleasure having you both on the show. And I think as uh, time goes on, we'll continue to get to keep updating people, okay? So we'll kind of put you down for this fall and come back and just keep us, keep us posted. Yeah, thank you for having us. As the saying goes on this particular show, for those who say it can't be done, it's usually interrupted by those like these fine people right here who are trying their level best to keep our community safe, who are doing it. We'll be right back. Lee Pitts Live is a Lee Pitts Enterprise production. Hello, Southwest Florida. Thanks for watching Lee Pitts Live. Of course, I'm Lee Pitts. I hope you enjoy that particular show, but you can always catch us here on YouTube. Just click on the subscribe button down there. That way you can get your Lee Pitts Live on demand when you want it and how you want it. We also encourage you to watch our show on Fox 4 and connect with us on all, all our social media platforms. Just type in Lee Pitts Live.